What about indications of infection in CFS? Um, the uh, indications of infection that are indirect are, are that in referral practices like ours in Boston uh, or Dr. Peterson's, about 70 to 85 percent of patients state that their illness began suddenly with an acute flu-like illness, uh, although in community-based studies where unselected populations have been randomly contacted and asked about the criteria that define or don't define them as having CFS, it's a lower frequency. In a very careful prospective study, organized by the CDC and Dr. Lloyd and his colleagues involved in leading it in Australia, I think the existence for the first time conclusively documented um, a post-infectious fatigue syndrome following infection with EBV, Ross River virus, um, and uh, Q fever agent. This is immune, circulating immune complex uh, data from uh, our hospital, our laboratory, uh, a pretty, a very sensitive assay uh, finds a clear difference in the patient group versus the age and sex matched healthy controls. Many studies have found elevated numbers of circulating CD8 T cells that bear activation antigens on the cell surface. And many studies, and Dr. Klimas and her colleagues, the leaders of this field, have found poor in function, impaired function, in conventional assays of natural killer cells. Many studies, again, it's not a, a, a unanimous literature, but I think the preponderance of studies uh, that have looked at this have found upregulation of various pro-inflammatory cytokines, either circulating or produced by peripheral mononuclear cells in culture. Uh, several studies have found increased TGF-beta, which uh, may be uh, an attempt, a counter-regulatory attempt to damp down the pro-inflammatory response. Gene expression studies uh, conducted by Dr. Kerr and Dr. Vernon and Whistler and their colleagues at the CDC uh, and other groups uh, have found upregulation of genes encoding proteins involved in immune activation, energy metabolism, and various neurohormones involved in the stress response, uh, more often in patients with CFS than in various control groups. What about HHV6 itself? What is the evidence for a possible association of this virus uh, and chronic fatigue syndrome? Many of you are, will be familiar with the cytopathic effect of this virus. When a lymphocyte is infected, or I should say more precisely, when a mononuclear cell is infected by the virus after four days, typically in cell culture, there, whoops, I'm sorry. There is the outgrowth of these very large cells, uh, refractile giant cells, they've been called. In a study of patients with chronic fatigue syndrome and matched age and gender matched healthy controls, the cells placed in cell culture, the outgrowth of large refractile giant cells was seen in many of the CFS patients using polyclonal antisera those cells uh, lit up, the polyclonal antisera for HHV6, those cells lit up in selected, oh, uh, those phenomena were found in much more often in two patient groups, one possibly part of an epidemic, the other sporadic cases compared with control subjects, a significant difference. And on selected patients, obviously we didn't do it on everyone, uh, monoclonal antibodies, three different monoclonal antibodies confirmed what the polyclonal uh, antisera had shown, as did um, DNA in situ cytohybridization uh, and electron microscopy. There have been uh, many studies of HHV6 and CFS. Um, some have used really only uh, serologic studies that cannot distinguish active infection from latent infection. 
and with a virus as ubiquitous as this, that's, that's uh, difficult. But when you look at those studies that have uh, been indicative of active infection using any of these uh, three techniques, the preponderance of published studies find an association of the virus with chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, the number of patients in those studies nearly tenfold greater than in the studies that don't find such an association. So in conclusion, I think there's increasing evidence that HHV6 may be one infectious agent capable of triggering and perpetuating this syndrome, although a causal link remains to be established. And given uh, the increasing evidence of an association of this virus with temporal lobe seizures and MS, and some clinical overlaps between CFS and those two conditions, uh, the HHV6 association becomes more provocative, but uh, remains of uncertain significance at this time. Thanks very much.